Good morning, folks. We're going to hit today's top story and then dive back in time to help us discuss the Earth-facing solar quiet effect. Rather than a special video at some point later next week, we'll just go through it today. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find that the coronal holes are largely crossing central Earth-facing longitudes and on their way out, while new bright areas appear at the eastern limb. The one now crested into view on the south is slightly decayed, but we can still make out her umbral cores. The solar wind is quiet as well. Discover an ACE solar wind telemetry on top, magnetometer and KP index on the bottom. Even with the error spikes top left on Discover, which have happened since its first week in space, the spikes never reached up into anything scary for a plasma range. They are errors, and it's riding in calm territory again now. Quick note, this is indeed Venus on Soho. We did mention it a few times in the last two weeks as heading in, and as it came directly between us and the sun, we viewed its dark side so the glare lessened until its departure brought more solar light reflection off the side of the planet. Folks, this is what it looks like. A landslide taking an entire piece of a Norwegian rural region and sending it into the sea, then sinking. The water came in quickly, but amazingly, there are no reports of injuries. Up next, we're doing an outlook for the Gulf. That system is about to gain her intensity from the warmer waters and charge northward. We've got the sequence running here showing the wide arm band of rain that hits well east of the eye's target landfall location. Interestingly, it'll take about a day for the strongest rains to build there. Then it's going to continue tracking northward about as much as it's able. Interesting story up first in the news about the Mayan Genesis. Turns out their civilization was constructed much more quickly than believed, with virtually no social inequality. And the new, brush-covered discovery near Tabasco, Mexico shows that it's almost like they were part of a great society before. A catastrophe happened and then they all somehow knew how to come together and rebuild. Up next, folks, we're going to the larger of Mars' two moons, Phobos. Now, Phobos makes no sense. How did it get there? Its shape is ridiculous, and both the capture and impact formation hypotheses have considerable mathematical troubles. Here they are learning more about its fine-grained surface character, which does help combine with their previous studies to determine exactly what Phobos is doing there, how it was made, and are the gravitational forces of Mars going to rip it apart one day. They currently don't have any answers, but they are hopeful. Well folks, this is the Crab Nebula. We've all seen it before, and now the Chernikov Global Array gets a member that can see it too, in gamma rays. Gamma astronomy from the ground is quite the amazing thing, Article is linked below, and a group of people here not jumping to invite Elon for drinks over his Starlink disaster for astronomy. I wonder if this amazing piece of technology is ever actually going to do what it's capable of doing. So folks, there are these hypothetical particles called gravitons. Never discovered. No charge. No mass, even though they are said to be causing gravity to be imparted on things. Well, new math is suggesting that if two of these hypothetical gravitons ever came close together, they would enter a dance, and if that were to be the case, then that would be our dark matter. Now, true enough, gravitons are nonsensical, especially if you understand electrostatic, electromagnetic, and the dielectric. But true enough, this would be like a C-plus grade idea, while those WIMP and Axion searches are complete failures, F-. minus. Now, folks... Let's go back to a clip of our first Earth-facing solar quiet dedicated video in 2013. I imagine most of you don't know this book, but for those that do, I bet you're awake now. This is the Maunders book, that couple team of scientists for whom the great minimum was named. And in this book, they tell a story of the sun that couldn't be more relevant to our discussions. They noticed a period of time where the Earth-facing sunspots seemed to disproportionately decay from the sun. It's a simple concept. But when the Maunder Minimum ended, the sun stopped this Earth-facing sunspot decay and did not start again until November 2011. We were at the start of Solar Cycle 24 and we can pinpoint the exact month where the sunspot stopped flaring as much, where the rapid rise in monthly sunspot numbers began to hit a wall. It's one of the key signatures that our sun is heading downward for another grand minimum this century. Now what to look for as the sunspots come back? Active sunspot decay. That is, in terms of flaring, umbral size, number of sunspot umbra, and their magnetic interactions. 
we have seen both the current bright active regions be much more active before they turned into view here this week. The one from the north disappeared completely. Now the other thing that we're going to have to watch for is the departing shots. When the active regions head out of view to the right, it's like holding your breath through a tunnel, like they couldn't wait to get away from Earth so they could exhale and let out those eruptions. These are two of the key things we are going to need to be watching for over the next three to five years. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.